we really need to think as we begin together about setting the tone. Notice one is highlighted. I want to talk a little bit about our identity as technicians and musicians, um, especially. And we're going to talk a lot about building a bridge between the booth and the stage. We're going to talk about how we serve each other. We're going to talk about how we do what we do. And I think a lot of times, especially as techs, we have this tendency because we're kind of head down, twisting knobs and pushing faders, following that cue sheet, trying not to miss what's, what's, what's next. Sometimes we run the risk of sort of honing so much on our skill that who we are becomes based around what we do or how good we are at what we do. Now, I want you to be great at what you do in terms of execution and how we plan and prepare and pull off Sunday mornings and other services and events that we're a part of. But as much as I wanna encourage us to be excellent at what we do, we also need to talk about who we are. Because as we saw in the poll, you know, we're all leaders. We're, we're, we're here because we're leaders. Leaders of teams, pastors, tech directors, whatever that might be. So leading is about more than doing. It's about being, about being worth someone worth following. So as we learn about what to do, we also must learn about who to be. So we're going to talk about who we are for a second. Whether you're, whether you're the guy down center with the microphone or not, I think it's important for us all to remember that we're all worship leaders, whether a tech, musician, or pastor. Our role is to prepare the hearts of the church to encounter God. Can everybody agree with that? And so a lot of times, you know, especially from the tech side, we think, oh, that's the worship leader. I'm just the guy who walks in the back door at an hour that no one in their right mind should be awake, coming in, you know, trying to be invisible, trying not to be distracting, doing my job, dressed in black. You know, in fact, some of you have probably been told, you know, the best tech team is invisible. Well, invisible doesn't mean insignificant. And I think for some of you, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to get real emotional today because this is a big deal. <clears throat> um, for some of you, you could walk away from this weekend, just knowing that changes the temperature of this Sunday. So invisible doesn't mean it's insignificant because we're all worship leaders, right? So we're going to need to talk about the what. You know, we have an opportunity to be used by God. And this is this is my favorite quote from Matt Redman. He says, we're called to facilitate an environment where the people of God can encounter or experience the presence of God through the praises of God. That's way more than just being good at kick drum EQ or just being good at playing the right notes at the right time, right? I mean, we're, we're called to create an environment where people are encouraged to encounter the presence of God through the praises of God. That's a, that's a calling. That's way more than just a skill, right? So if we can take our eyes off of our identity as being based on our skill and rather being based around who God has called us to be and what he's called us to do, that totally changes what happens on stage, backstage, in the green rooms, with our pastors, with our teams, you know, in the way that we interact with each other. So we need to talk about the how. Um, I, think, I think skill is really, really important. I want to encourage people to be brilliant. But most of us focus on being brilliant in terms of skill. And you know, when, you, when you talk about somebody who's brilliant at something, it's, it's usually because they're great at it. And you know, the Bible has a lot to say about being skillful, right? I mean, there's tons of stuff in the Bible about skill. My, one of my favorite passages in the Old Testament, when Keenan and I was made the first of the head Levites. He was in charge of the singing. That was his responsibility because he was skillful at it. God called the first worship leader because he was the best singer, not because he was so-and-so's wife or related to the pastor or some political thing. It was because he was good. So there's nothing wrong with being great at singing, right? Whatever you find to do with your hands, do it with all your might. Sing a new song, play skillfully, shout for joy. The Bible encourages, encourages us to be great at what we do. Even in the New Testament, work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Whatever you might do, work from the soul as to the Lord, not to men. So there's this call to excellence and this higher calling to be great at what we do. The thing that I want to encourage us today, though, is that we also need to think of brilliance in terms of light. Because 
a real familiar passage for all of us, Matthew 5, right? You're the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it can provide light for the whole house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Father in heaven. So we're called to be brilliant at what we do. We're also called to be brilliant at who we are. So for, for this next couple of days, I want us to really focus on how to be great at what we do. I want you to walk away from tomorrow with skills that can improve how your Sunday looks and feels and sounds starting this week. But we also wanna walk away with this higher calling and this sort of lift up our eyes and be aware of what we've been called to do by who we're challenged to be. Does that make sense? So I hope that we can do that together. 